Let's talk about the various things that protect the brain. So these are the meninges, the CSF, and the blood-brain barrier are things that I think of as protective. So I kind of gonna teach them together. Also got my protection here. So let's start by drawing out the meninges. These should be familiar from learning the spinal cord. So what I'm gonna do is start with the closest layer to the skull, to the brain itself. This is the thinnest layer, which is also called the pia matter. So this is actually a layer that on the brain follows along the convolutions. So that means it follows along the gyri and sulci as it goes. So it kind of dips down into each of these. You will see this in a sheep brain um, as we really clear how thin of a layer it is. That is a very thin, fibrous, continuous with the actual grooves of the brain. Um, it's a very thin, gentle covering. Pia matter. Outside of that, we're gonna have the arachnoid matter. That is a little bit of a thicker space, um, more layers. It's kind of got spider-like trabiculae. Um, so that's going to be kind of up here, a little bit thicker and kind of have some spider-like branches in it. That is our arachnoid, arachnoid like spider, right? Arachnophobia, arachnoid matter. In this space here, so this subarachnoid space, this is where cerebral spinal fluid is contained. So I'm gonna draw that in kind of a dark blue because it's liquidy. Um, in this subarachnoid space here, is our CSF, cerebral spinal fluid. Then the last layer of the meninges is going to be the thickest layer, our dura matter. Dura is hard. This is the th really thick outer layer that is actually fairly hard. You will see this in an example in our sheep brain. It's actually really hard to get off. Um, it's not as hard as the skull, which of course is made of bone, but it is pretty darn tough, a physical protection that encloses all of the central nervous system. The blood vessels are underneath there. Um, yeah. So let's look at this on a different image here. It's helpful to draw it out yourself but here is a view of the brain and spinal cord and really emphasizing that these same sections are located both around the brain and around the spinal cord. The subarachnoid space is a little bit more obvious here with that spider-like um, structure being shown in this image here. Okay, another important structure in for the protection of the brain is the cerebral spinal fluid or CSF. This provides both physical and chemical protection. Um, so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it. We're not gonna go into tons of detail. It's produced by ependymal cells as the type of glial cell in certain regions. So in the choroid plexus, which is here and here, that's where it's produced. Um, so CSF is out here. It's different than our blood supply. So it is sep a separate fluid compartment. The CSF circulates in this green space here. This is this um, subarachnoid space. So it's going to be in between that arachnoid membrane and the pia membrane that surrounds the brain and spinal cord itself. So it is going to circulate in that space all the way around the brain, down the spinal cord, 
and back up to be circulated. Um, it's continuously secreted, produced by the pinema cells and absorbed as well um, through the meninges to be kind of refreshed. Um, it is an important role in several protective properties. So physical protection is going to be important for shock absorption. So um, because it's a fluid, as well as reducing the weight of the brain, because it is providing a buoyant um, fluid. Buoyant is buoyant, right? Things are buoyant in fluids. So that's the physical things it does. It also does all kinds of chemical protection. Um, by regulating the extracellular environment. So the extracellular environment regulation. Uh, this is going to include um, getting rid of wastes, helping gases diffuse, and maintaining homeostasis of the external environment. It is um, also going to be located in the ventricles of the brain. So in addition to the subarachnoid space, in this image down here, you can see um, the ventricles. These are open spaces within the brain. CSF is produced in part of the third and fourth ventricle, but then also fills the rest of these, these ventricles that are shown again in this location down here. So unlike the capillaries in the rest of your body, your brain has a special barrier between the blood vessels and the actual brain tissue, similar to what occurs in the placenta of a newborn. So this image here is just showing all the blood vessels. There's blood innervation, um, blood supply to the brain. And the capillaries for this look a little different than the capillaries to the rest of your body. Um, and this is gonna be important for creating this barrier. So capillaries actually are branches of blood vessels. So you have a artery here that's going to branch and form, these are supposed to be um, branches the other half, I'm gonna draw blue. Why? Because we draw vessels blue once they become deoxygenated. So the blood supply is going this way. And this is our capillary bed that's going to occur for diffusion to occur of gas of blood and gases out and then in. So the blood brain barrier is a separate covering that covers the capillaries of the brain to allow for less diffusion and more highly regulated diffusion than would occur that occurs in the rest of your body. So I'm going to show an image of this first and then I'll draw um, kind of a cross section of this. So this is showing um, two different capillaries. This would be, I'm sorry, it's actually just one capillary here from two different views. This is showing the capillary right here and it's surrounded by astrocyte foot processes. Here is an astrocyte, which is a neuroglia cell nearby the neurons. And these astrocytes have little feet that go out and um, cover different portions of our neuron of our blood vessel. These coverings make up the blood brain barrier. The foot processes create tight junctions that prevent stuff from going easily in and out. We don't have that happen as much. This means that the what, what can access the brain is highly regulated, um, highly restricted, it's selectively permeable. So anything that can cross across here are things that can cross across membranes. So what are those things? Lipids, fat soluble molecules can actually go into the brain. 
high, small nonpolar hydrophobic substances that could get through these foot processes because there's not open gaps. So I'm actually gonna draw one more picture. picture. It's a cross section of a peripheral capillary and then a brain capillary. So a peripheral capillary, if we take a cross section of this, we're gonna have, what's the blood vessel actually made of? It's made of cells, right? So here I'm drawing two different cells. Um, I'm gonna draw a nucleus in the middle of each one. This actually, this is a nucleus here. This in here is the lumen of the capillary, of the vessel. And these pores here are kind of the key part. Stuff can flow in and out of your capillaries, like at your skeletal muscles, fairly easily. This is actually important for bulk flow of stuff across your capillaries. It's for fluid um, to move into your skeletal muscles and out. If you have a problem with this, that's edema, so swelling. Um, so this is actually what's gonna occur in the periphery. Basically the idea is this does not happen. Uh, I'm gonna actually draw that with the other size. This does not happen this way in the brain. So we got the same thing shown here. We've got these two cells, but in addition, we're gonna have astrocytes covering. There's our two cells. And then we're gonna have these astrocyte foot processes coat this thing. Because of this, there are not these big old pores that we have like we'd have in the periphery. Instead, we've got tight junctions. No pores, so we have this barrier. Again, this is going to mean that only things, the only things that can pass through here are going to be things that can pass across the membrane. So those hydrophobic small molecules, oxygen, carbon dioxide, great. Um, steroids actually, so cholesterol derivatives. Versus here, we can have basically um, a bulk flow occur.